Hello guys, welcome and welcome back to another Division 2 video. So in today's video, I'm going to break down three extremely powerful DPS builds that you can start using today for Year 6 Season 2. These are some of the best solo legendary PvE builds in the game right now, and they will be taking advantage of a few of the new gear pieces and weapons, as well as some of the most powerful gear sets in the Division 2. These builds will also work great for open world content and are designed to power through higher difficulty activities very easily. So heroic bounties, legendary missions, control points, and all that other jazz. The first build on this list is an incredibly powerful striker setup that utilizes the power of the new Strega exotic assault rifle to deal out an insane amount of raw weapon damage. This build absolutely shreds armor. The Strega AR and striker gear set truly complement each other and are like the perfect dynamic duo. And I'll explain why that is and how this build setup works so well later during the build breakdown. The second build I'll be breaking down for you guys is a very powerful Negotiator's Dilemma LMG build that uses the full power of the newly improved Pestilence Exotic LMG. So the Pestilence has gotten an RPM buff post-release of the Shades of Red title update and now it's truly a force to reckon with. The Pestilence synergizes extremely well with Negotiator's Dilemma, making this a very powerful and viable DPS build great for solo PvE. Last but not least, this third build is a Foundry Bulwark setup with a nice balance of survivability and weapon damage. I made a video on this build in the past, but since then I've made some minor changes to it, so it's a bit better than before. This is the most ideal build for solo players because it has the most survivability out of the three, but it still deals out a great amount of weapon damage as well. And the armor regen on this build is incredible. Like, it's through the roof and you'll find it very easy to stay alive while still dealing out heavy damage. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. So guys, this first build is a super powerful and hard hitting striker build using the Strega Exotic Assault Rifle, as well as the new Centurion's Scabbard Exotic Holster. And for those who may not know, the Strega Exotic Assault Rifle can easily be attained from the Season Reward Track at level 69. This weapon works really well with the striker gear set, because it complements the damage increase you get per stack from the striker set. So, um, with the talent Unnerve, killing an enemy will apply a mark on every enemy within 20 meters of them, and multiple marks can be applied to the same enemy. And get this, the max number of marks that can be applied to an enemy is 5. So here's the thing, you will deal 15% amplified damage per mark to marked enemies, so that's 75% added weapon damage to any enemy marked five times. That's insane, right? And since this build absolutely shreds, getting those marks should be easy. So now for the secondary weapon, I highly recommend using the ACS-12 shotgun if you have one, or even better, the named ACS-12 shotgun, Rock and Roll. This weapon comes with a talent perfectly extra, which has a 50% increased magazine capacity. It's also the best weapon in the game for building up striker stacks. You can build striker stacks super fast with the ACS-12. You can pretty much get a full striker stack with just like three quarters of a mag, so it's fast. And once you get your stacks, you can just swap back to the Strega and weapons free, okay? So for the gear pieces, I have a four piece striker set with the named Henry Vest that comes with the talent Perfect Companion. This talent is amazing because it adds a nice 20% increased weapon damage to the build. However, you will need to be within the proximity of either a skill or teammate, like an actual teammate in your group. So I'm using the Survivalist Healing Seeker Mine for this reason. While deployed, the Heal Seeker Mine will serve as my companion, activating the companion talent so I get that 20% increased damage. However, for those who may be struggling to get this vest because it can be a bit tedious getting it to drop with both critical hit chance and damage, then um, an excellent alternative would be a Cheska chest piece with the talent Obliterate. Obliterate will also give you a 20% weapon damage increase at full stacks, so it will work just as fine. Plus, you will also be getting an 8% critical hit chance increase from the Seska brand set as well, which only helps big time because the critical hit chance on this build is actually a bit low. So for the weapon specialization, I'm using Survivalist for the Healing Seeker Mine and for the 10% protection from Elites, but feel free to use whatever floats your boat. But if you decide to go with a Cheska Vest with the Obliterate Talent instead of Perfect Companion, then try the Gunner specialization for the 10% armor on Kill Bonus, or whatever you prefer. Because again, I'm only using Survivalist for the Mender Seeker Mine. 
Now for the holster, the new Centurion Scabbard will help by granting 20% rate of fire and weapon damage, as well as a 50% magazine size and reload speed. But you will get these buffs one by one each time you swap weapons and the bonuses will last for 12 seconds or until you swap again, so it's a nice addition to the build. Alright, so I have critical hit damage rolled on all of my striker pieces, and for the vest, I have critical hit chance, and for the Centurion holster, critical hit chance and weapon handling. For the stats, about 44% critical hit chance and 110% critical hit damage. Now, if you had a Cheska vest instead, then that would bump the critical hit chance up to 54%. So again, Cheska is a great alternative. Just roll Obliterate on it and you'll be set. For my primary skill, I'm using the Fixer drone for additional healing and also to activate the companion talent. Okay guys, next up is the Pestilence Negotiator build. This build is also very powerful and the Pestilence really performs well with the Negotiator's Dilemma talent. And that's mainly because of how powerful the Plague of Outcast talent is on this weapon. This weapon talent will basically apply a debuff to the enemy, dealing over 100% weapon damage for over 10 seconds, and this stacks up to 50 times. And with Negotiator's Dilemma, all marked enemies will take damage from the Plague of the Outcast, so it really synergizes well with the Dilemma gear set. For the gear pieces, I'm using the named Henry Vest with the perfect companion talent for the increased 20% weapon damage. So this build is a bit similar to the Striker build, except I'm using the Memento backpack, mainly for the 30% weapon damage and 3% armor regen you get at full stacks. So this backpack really helps with overall damage output as well as survivability. But a good alternative to this backpack is the Liquid Engineer named Backpack that comes with Bloodsucker, or you can just run the Dilemma Backpack with the Centurion Scabbard Holster if you'd like. You can also swap out the Henry Vest for a Grupo Vest for the extra 13% critical hit damage and just roll the Obliterate Talent on that. For the Dilemma Gear pieces, I have critical hit damage rolled on the mask, holster and knee pads, and critical hit chance rolled on the gloves. For the secondary weapon, you can use whatever you'd like, but we'll mainly be using the Pestilence for the most part. The Pestilence now has a crazy high RPM and it's a lot better than before, so you can really see some great damage on this build, even at a lower expertise. Okay, so for the weapon specialization, I'm using Survivalist for the Healing Seeker Mind to activate the companion talent on my chest piece. And for my primary skill, I'm using the Fixer Drone. And for the stats, 55% critical hit chance and 110% critical hit damage. And again, if you don't have this named Henry Vest, then get a Grupo Vest and roll the Talent Obliterate. That's a good alternative. Okay guys, this last build has the most survivability and it can still put out really good damage. So this is a Foundry Bulwark build and for those who don't know, Foundry Bulwark is designed for a tank. But with the way this build is set up, it can still deal out great damage as you can see from this gameplay footage, right? So this build is more balanced and is better suited for solo players who would like to have that extra survivability, but are still able to put out great damage. And this build also works exceptionally well in legendary missions. So for this build, I'm using the Strega Exotic Assault Rifle. And the Strega Exotic Assault Rifle is great with this build because of its talent, Unnerve, but you can also use the St. Elmo's Engine or the Capacitor. For the secondary weapon, you can use whatever you'd like, and for the gear pieces, I decided to run the Catharsis Mask for the extra survivability, because I do run legendary missions with this build and it helps by providing me some heals as well as damage. So the way this mask works for those who don't know, taking damage will build stacks to a cap of 30. Each stack will grant you 1.5% weapon damage, but taking damage at max stacks triggers a purge. This purge will not only reset your stacks back to zero, but it will also remove any status effect that you are affected by, as well as drop a healing cloud that will restore 5% of your max armor for 10 seconds. Now, if you don't have this mask, then a coyote mask will also work great as an alternative. For the backpack, I'm using a Fenris Group AB for the 10% assault rifle damage. Rolled with the talent Vigilance. Vigilance is nice because it adds an increased 25% weapon damage, but the only downside is this buff gets disabled for 4 seconds when you are hit. And uh, I chose to go all blue with this build for the extra survivability since I use this build for legendary missions. The survivability is incredible on this build, but feel free to roll more weapon damage on here if you'd like. One cool feature about this build is the crazy amount of shield health and healing you get from the gear set. And since I'm using the Artificer Hive as my secondary skill, it will actually fully replenish the shield's health periodically. 
So that's pretty cool and helps with staying alive, especially while running legendary missions because the NPCs are brutal on legendary, so it can get pretty intense. For the gear pieces, I have critical hit chance rolled on the vest, holster, and gloves, and critical hit damage rolled on the knee pads. So there you have it, guys. I hope these builds help. Give them a try and let me know what you guys think. The Foundry Bulwark build won't hit nearly as hard as the first two, but it's still a great option, especially if you're someone who has trouble staying alive on higher difficulty content. Also, I'd like to know what you guys think of the new title update, as well as what other builds you'd like to see. I'm curious. So yeah, this is Prajna. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you're new to the channel. And to all my channel members, I love you guys. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really means the world to me. You guys are awesome, so stay tuned for members only exclusive content. If you guys need a group for any of the raids, incursions, or even open world farming, then consider joining the Sword Gaming Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description of this video, and if it's expired, then check out the link in the banner. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them for me in the comment section, and like always, keep it cool, keep it classy, and see you in the next video. Peace out.